believes in somebody or when he takes kind to somebody, he doubles down. And if he gives you a word that he's going to make sure you're all right, Mm -hmm. he's going to do that. Jaguar Wright is at it again. And this time, things are getting fired up as the singer has purportedly opened up serious revelations that could have far-reaching consequences. Her statements echo the message she's been trying to convey for years, which everyone ignored. What did Jaguar Wright say this time? And what repercussions would it have on the industry? According to sources, singer Jaguar Wright, known for making wild allegations, some of which were proven true, has fired some shots in the wake of Cat Williams' interview. The sources claim that the singer has backed all that Cat Williams said in his explosive interview interview on Club Shay Shay, but had a word of caution for him. In December, Kat released several bombshells when he sat down with Shannon Sharp in what many have named the interview of the year. It's a cabal. It's a it's a consortium. They they rock with who they rock with and they don't with who they don't. Cat Williams went on to name drop elites of the music, film and comedy industry who have turned several of the players into their own puppets. He also claimed that some industry players have sold their souls to the devil, which is the reason for their unrivaled success. He called Kevin Hart an industry plant and claimed the comedian joined the Illuminati, which has supported him throughout his career. He then went after Ricky Smiley, explaining that Smiley was so disrespectful that he decided not to work with him again until he wore a dress in his next movie. However, he reserved some criticisms and slight mockery for the owner of Bad Boy Entertainment, P. Diddy. According to Kat, he had to turn down $50 million four times in his career to protect his virgin hole. He also indicated that he had to say no to P. Diddy, who was bent on partying with him. Just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about, right? Because P. Diddy be wanting to party and you got to tell him no, explained the 52-year-old comedian. You got to tell him no. I did. See, I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you, that's why I can say them so freely. Kat took another swipe at P. Diddy later in the interview when he stated that he didn't like looking at women because he didn't want to be tempted. When I see people's wives and stuff, I don't even look at them. I don't want to look at nothing I don't want to have because I know how blessed I am, he said. If I look at it, I got it. That's how Diddy be feeling. The ace comedian was referencing the S.A.N.R. accusations that were labeled against the Baby Boy Records executive in November last year. Four women, including Diddy's ex-girlfriend Cassie Ventura, filed independent lawsuits claiming that the rapper had violated them on several occasions. Though he has denied any wrongdoing, Diddy agreed to an out-of-court settlement with Cassie, which is believed to be in millions of dollars. However, Cat Williams didn't spare him as he criticized the business mogul for his treatment of women and other men. Interestingly, Jaguar Wright has been warning the world against Diddy's behavior, but many dismissed her claims. A few years, Jaguar claimed that her lawyer told her she accidentally walked into a male artist giving Diddy fellatio and had to walk out. According to the lawyer, she went up to Diddy's office to deliver some documents, and she found the door unlocked so she decided to walk in, only to see the male artist kneeling between Diddy's legs. Later, Diddy confronted the lawyer about what she had seen in the office the other day. The lawyer questioned why Diddy didn't close the door, to which he responded that he owned the building and could do whatever he pleased. Diddy then claimed that it was all about money and power, and if you have both, you can make a man do whatever you please. Jaguar alleged that Diddy hounded the lawyer out of New York like he did to Wendy Williams. She warned the rapper to stay away from the lawyer and leave her be. Interestingly, Wendy Williams accused Diddy of the same thing when she was a radio host in New York. Wendy was one of the first few people to claim that Diddy was the low and that all the women he was flaunting were just a front. This didn't go down well with the rapper, who allegedly sent his girl band to teach Wendy Williams a lesson. The girls were allegedly unsuccessful in their adventure, and Wendy Williams went home unscathed. Jaguar Wright's statements were met with heavy skepticism, with many calling her delusional until she was vindicated by Cat Williams' interview. However, according to sources, Jaguar sent a word of caution to Cat to be careful of the elites he's exposing, as they may be planning to eliminate him. It's difficult to tell whether Jaguar is talking from experience or conjecture, but given that she's exposed Diddy and a few other celebrities before, it's likely she's speaking from experience. Curiously, Diddy isn't the only one Cat Williams torched, as he also criticized former Hollywood executive Harvey Weinstein. According to the veteran comedian, Weinstein once asked to perform fellatio on him, but he refused. When Cat exposed Weinstein for his demands, many fans, including industry players, canceled him only to find out he was right all along when 
Weinstein was convicted of SA. They cancelled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out, but he offered to SA me in front of all my people at my agency. What am I supposed to do? He did all of that. I'm thinking I'm the only black person on the script. I get there. It's three other black guys on there. Woo. Huh? I told him no. What y'all do? Meanwhile, Weinstein is currently serving a jail term at Mohawk Correctional Facility, New York, and could be released in 2042. Cat's revelations on Club Shay Shay have allegedly left Jaguar fearing for his life and may have cautioned him to be on the lookout, especially as it involved Diddy. And given Diddy's connections in the industry, maybe Jaguar isn't being paranoid. Moreover, theories flying around that Diddy was heavily involved in the ending of Tupac probably give credence to Jaguar Wright's story. Recently, rumors started making rounds that Diddy gave money to eliminate Tupac, although the music mogul has vehemently denied it. That theory was further galvanized in October last year, when 50 Cent also insinuated that Diddy had a hand in Tupac's demise. In an Instagram post on the 6th of October, 50 Cent posted the now infamous picture of Sugi Knight riding with Tupac the night he was taken out. He then captioned the post, Damn, so Pac got lined up by Brother Love. LOL. Time to lay her up. Things might get sticky. Interestingly, Sug Knight, in a recent podcast with Breakbeat Media, insinuated the same thing and revealed that Puffy got Steve Harvey to clean up the mess by doing PR for him. According to him, Harvey seemed to be on the payroll of Diddy because Harvey would diss Tupac to everyone else but pretend to love him when the cameras were rolling. He would also feature Diddy and Snoop Dogg in his TV show at the height of the East Coast-West Coast rivalry to show that Diddy was all about love. You got Steve Harvey, old bitch. You know, tell him, well, going to. However, the most damning allegation came from a notable member of the Southside Compton Crips, Keith D, who alleged that Diddy paid the Crips $1 million to end Tupac. But Keith D added that they never got the down payment for the hit. According to Keith D, Diddy called an associate of the Crips after Tupac's assassination to find out if they were behind the hit. He also claimed that Diddy expressed satisfaction knowing that his bitter rival had finally gone down. On why they never received the $1 million, Keith D explained that the money was paid to the associate who Diddy called to inquire about the hit, but that associate never gave the money to the group. In his book Compton Street Legend, Keith D claimed that P. Diddy ordered the Tupac assassination as they were having pastrami sandwiches and pink champagne. While eating, Diddy asked to talk to Keith D on the side, so the two excused themselves. According to Keith D, Diddy then told him that he wanted Suge Knight and P. Diddy handled, to which Keith responded, that's not a problem. A few days later, a white Cadillac pulled up close to Tupac's car while he was riding to an event at Suge Knight's club. An occupant of the Cadillac then released four rounds into Tupac, who sadly passed away six days later. Although Diddy openly expressed his sorrow and denied accusations linking him to the demise of Tupac, many fans don't believe it. They keep linking to the dastardly act, which is why Jaguar White appears to be afraid for Cat Williams. Interestingly, Diddy wasn't the only one Cat roasted as the likes of Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, and Martin Lawrence also had their fair share. According to Cat, Steve Harvey stole Mark Curry's entire set about Halloween and used them in his own routine. He claimed that Harvey was in the business of stealing people's concepts and ideas and questioned his originality. He also criticized the celebrated talk show host for using Mark Curry's material in Hanging with Mr. Cooper on his own sitcom, The Steve Harvey Show. The veteran comedian said, Now Steve got a sitcom where he the principal, and he wear a suit, and then he gets this high top fade, making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business and it's a man unit. Cat Williams was particularly critical of the late Bernie Mac's treatment at the hands of Steve Harvey. He claimed that Harvey was so jealous of Mac's success that he called the producers of Ocean's Eleven to have him replaced. He also bashed Steve Harvey for lying that he didn't want to be a movie star when it was actually he who called studios for roles. Cat claimed that many studios weren't convinced about Harvey's acting skills, which is why he hasn't gotten any roles. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asked for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good and look like Mr. Potato Head. There ain't none. You have to have range. He also called out Cedric the Entertainer for stealing his routine, an accusation that Cedric the Entertainer had denied in the past. However, Cat doubled down on his claims, explaining that that particular joke was his best at the time. This is not just a random joke. This is my very best joke and it's my last joke and it's my closing joke, Williams continued. 1998, I'm doing this joke, it's on Comic View. 
Cedric comes to the comedy store. He watches me in the audience. He comes backstage. He tells me what a great job I did and how much he loves the joke. Two years later, he's doing that as his last joke on the Kings of Comedy, and he's doing it verbatim. He's just changed my car into a spaceship. Kat also questions Cedric's credentials, calling him a walrus who can't sing, dance, or act. So given how Kat described some of the powers that be in Hollywood, it makes sense that his fans, including Jaguar Wright, would fear for his life. Though it is apparent that he was telling the truth. They suspect that the elites in the show business might come after him and probably do to him what happened to Tupac. For now, we keep our fingers crossed and wish Kat all the best. And this brings us to the end of today's episode. Thanks for watching.